Hey gardeners, I need to make some repairs today on my irrigation system, just some adjustments. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about my irrigation system. I've done other videos on it, kind of giving the anatomy of, of the system overall, and then some of the spray emitters. But that's evolved over time, so I thought I'd show you what I'm using today, what works, what doesn't, the pros and cons of the emitters I use, in case that helps you as you're planning out irrigation. So whether you have just a few plants or a lot on drip irrigation, I think it's good to know how the system works and how to make repairs if you need to, rather than relying on someone else to do those. It's actually quite easy uh, to do it yourself. You just need a few parts on hand and some know-how. So this video is not gonna show you how to actually install a whole irrigation system. I'm actually gonna link a video that I think is really great for that but I do just want to kind of show you some of the basics and how to make a repair or alteration today. So this is the half inch mainline tubing. This is what essentially runs the whole artery system of water to the plants. And then to the actual emitters, there's this quarter inch line. And that allows you to pop on an emitter of your choice. You need a few tools. One is a hole punch. This allows you to punch a brand new hole into your mainline tubing so that you can put an additional micro tubing on or emitter to feed to a plant. You simply put your tool over the pipe and then squeeze the handle like that. And it's going to punch a new hole in there for you. So beyond having a roll of mainline half inch poly tubing on hand and also that hole punch, I also recommend always having on hand this tubing here. This is your quarter inch line. Most people are going to use emitter styles that take a quarter inch line. So this is relatively inexpensive. You can get a big uh, 50 or 100 foot roll for under $10 generally. Okay, and this is another type of tubing that I have on hand. This is actually eighth inch, so it's smaller than what we just looked at. And I use that because that is the size that's required for these spot spitters. We'll take a look at these in action and why these are useful, but I uh, just want to kind of show you that the barb on the spot spitter fits into an eighth inch line. So we saw that's a perfect fit. Obviously with the quarter inch, it's, it's way too loose. It's not going to work there. So if you're going to use this type of emitter, you definitely need eighth inch line. Just to point out, these are a few different emitters that I can put onto my quarter inch line. I use these actually for my roses uh, to water them. These are similar to what you'd see as like the flag type drippers. Um, these put out a smaller volume of water. They're meant to be run for a long period of time to do a slow soak. So these are made to go onto the quarter inch. Almost every emitter you're going to find uh, is designed to go on quarter inch. Uh, the different colors just mean different flow rates. So I believe these are one, two, and three gallon per hour. Um, these are made by a company called Bowsmith. They're a non-clog uh, design, which is why I went with them with the flag style. Those tend to need um, some maintenance because they have calcium buildup. That's just in our, our water supply here, and it can affect the flow rate over time. These I've never had an issue with. I've had this in use for several years now and I've never had any kind of clogging happen on these. Another emitter style that you'll see often in my yard is this guy here. This also will attach to quarter inch line. You know, you just uh, force that onto the end there. There's all sorts of different manufacturers of these types of style bubblers, but they're referred to as like a mini fan sprayer or mini bubbler. Um, you can basically close it all the way in with the adjustable top so that no water comes out or you can rotate it you know fully open these are excellent for hitting a large radius the disadvantage with these is I tend to break them a lot um, stepping on the tops breaks them um, this little barb can break off very easily gets brittle and breaks off these can actually move on you move on their own without you doing anything they can completely pop off which is no good because now you have a jet of water coming out. Or they can even like move closed. I've seen that happen. 
or move more open. So they're not fixed. I mean, that's the point of them. They're adjustable, but the main issue is they don't stay where you have them set. I love that they're adjustable, but I don't like that they move on you on their own. All right, so these are another style of emitter that I've been using a lot lately. I just got it introduced to them last year, actually by a channel called Edibles and Exotics. So shout out to you, Kurt. Thank you for introducing me to these because they are absolutely awesome. So here's an example of the emitter. Unlike the one we just looked at, there are no moving parts. It's not adjustable. So they just push on to the line like that. And when I have it plugged in like this, it's going to spray water out in a fan pattern. It has another barbed end. So if I want to just stop watering for a time of the year, I can simply push it on this end and it's going to basically act as a plug so that no water will come out. So starting with the pros, why do I like this? I tend to not break these when I step on them. I don't break them. They're built much more solidly than those um, fan sprayers. There's no movable parts, so they're not going to pop off on you, which is really nice. Um, they're uh, much more reliable on the amount of water that's coming out of them for that reason. They're very consistent because it's just designed to output a fixed amount of gallons per hour, and it does that job. I like that I can turn it off as well by plugging the other end when I want to shut off water to a plant or a pot. Now the only downside to these is if you need different flow rates you're going to have to get different colored emitters. You cannot adjust it up and down, it's fixed. So you will have to buy more of these but they're super cheap so you can buy all the various flow rates and then if you need to move up one to a higher flow rate it's pretty easy. You just pull off the old one and put in the new one. So beyond the tubing, the tool, and the emitters, you're going to need connectors. So another thing that's going to come up that you're going to need um, to repair is your mainline tubing. It can easily get a gouge in the material. You know, um, you could accidentally push a shovel through it. I've done that many times where I've gouged my own line because I wasn't paying attention and put a hole into it. Um, you could have a rodent like chew through it or a dog chew through it. So the first step will be to cut that damaged part out. It's where you have two ends now. There are lots of different uh, couplers out there to make a repair. This is my favorite. It's again something I get from Drip Depot. I like these because they're so easy to put on and easy to take off. To make your repair you're going to push the barbed end onto your tubing. So you want the tubing coming up all the way there. You do the same thing on this side. It's a lot easier to do this in the summertime because they uh, expand easier. But you essentially use these clips and you just rotate it counterclockwise and now you've got a tight connection. So you can repair a leak, you know, literally in like a minute when you have this part. They make these for tees. So if you need to basically tee off, you have, you know, a lateral line and you want to now put a new line out to another set of trees. Uh, they have these tees. They work the same exact way. Uh, the other one that I commonly have is the end caps. So this just sticks on at the end of your line. And then it has this cap that you can unscrew here. And then you can run your system periodically, maybe once a year, and just purge out the line. Your water will just flow out, push any kind of sediment out. But it works the same way where, you know, you basically screw this piece on all the way to the end of the fitting to expose the barb. And then you push this barb into your polytubing and then rotate it as tight as it'll go over it. I've never had these leak. They're awesome. The last thing that you're going to need are some barbed connectors. The main ones I use are going to be couplers. This allows you to elongate your line. Same thing if it gets damaged or you just need to extend it. You plug this onto one end of your line 
and then plug another piece on the other end and extend it out to as far as you need it. The other purpose of this is to actually start a new line. So one end will go into your polytubing and then the other end will feed your microtubing. So couplers are probably the largest used item I have. Another useful item are goof plugs. So if you make a mistake and punch a hole you don't want in your mainline tubing, or you're simply taking out a line that was pre-existing and you want to plug that, this just inserts into that hole that you made in the mainline tubing and it plugs the water. Now, if you have really high pressure, the other thing I like to do is take some electric tape and wrap it around the goof plug and the pipe so that it doesn't go anywhere. Here's a T-style. So the way that I would most often use this is the point, the down point, that goes into your mainline tube, and then your microtubing goes on either end to make a closed loop. So you can put that around a you know, container, like a soaker hose type thing, or you can put it around a tree so that it gets even distribution of water. So that's another one that's good to have. And that's really all I use for connectors. So I want to make an alteration here. You can see that bubbler right there. I want to take that out and replace it with this spot spitter. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and put my spot spitter on the tubing. So you can see the end that has the little ridge, that's the one that actually goes in and sprays your plants. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and position my emitter where I want it. Now for this piece of it, I'm going to go ahead and just cut off the line and cut off the eighth inch line where I want it. So to make this work, I'm gonna go ahead and use a special kind of coupler. One end has a quarter inch barb and the other an eighth inch barb. So for our spot spitter line that's eighth inch, we're gonna just plug that in. And then we make the connection here to our existing quarter inch line. So here coming down you can see that was our existing line and then I put the coupler in and now it's extending eighth inch all the way to the trunk there. So pretty easy to do that alteration. Now I did want to call out that you don't have to use a coupler in that situation. We could have gone all the way back to our mainline tubing, make a 45 degree cut take it all the way back to your mainline tubing directly. You can actually directly insert eighth inch line into your half inch poly tubing. Uh, what I find to be the easiest is, you know, you'll go back and find the barb, you'll pull it out, and then to easily insert the tubing, um, they have this tool available where they're selling the spot spitters. And it just temporarily makes that hole a little bit bigger for the moment so that you can thread your eighth inch line in easier. Because it's a little bit difficult to do that without that tool. And I haven't had any issue with leaks or anything like that or this pulling out after a whole use in summer, no problems whatsoever. So it makes it pretty adaptable in that you don't need any connectors when you're using this style of emitter and line. Just running my lines so you can kind of see what these different emitters do. Here in my tropical area, I have a bunch of these fan sprayers. You can see casting a large amount of spray. I like these here because I'm trying to soak as much ground as possible, so that works well. For these 20 gallon pots, I have these spot spitters. The water is flowing out the top in an angled pattern. So I don't have a whole lot of volume. I can't remember how many gallon per hour this red one does, but it's fairly small because at this point this mulberry is really just a baby. It's not going to need a lot of water. So again, very easy to swap this out later when I need more flow. But um, this is a perfect application, the spot spitters for containers. I find them to be really good for that purpose. I've started to turning to this for my 
in-ground plants as well. So you can see this black sprayer is putting out far more volume than the red one. This one I think goes up to 19 gallons per hour. And the nice thing about this is for those plants that you don't want hitting the trunk, instead of using that 360 degree spray, you can simply turn it away from the trunk so that can be useful for plants like citrus that don't want their trunks wet. And really, any tropical during the winter, I don't want to necessarily have that trunk wet all the time. So this whole area is dry, so you can put this part of the emitter against the trunk of your plant. And I want to come over to this ice cream bean tree, because you can see I've done just that. I've got two of these spot spitters on either side of the trunk, so the spray is going out and out on both sides, wetting this whole area here. I'm doing the same thing for this Nixon Peach fig tree. In the world of irrigation parts, there are so many different emitters out there. And even now, I'm still playing to see what's the best one. But hopefully, just seeing what I'm using, why I'm using it, may help you in planning out your irrigation system or dialing things in. Just to touch quickly on watering schedule, since I know this is on a lot of people's mind now that we're switching to cooler temperatures, um, I am adjusting my irrigation. So I'll still be watering close to the same amount of volume, but I'm only gonna be watering every two to three days. So really during the cooler time of the year, you're not trying to keep the soil consistently wet all the time like you would in summer. During this time of the year, they're not sweating profusely. They're not experiencing that evaporation. So I don't need to water like I do in summer. This is where I will let them go a little bit dry in between waterings. So that'll probably drop to once a week as we get even cooler here in fall. And then once we hit winter, I may not need to water much at all. It just depends on whether we get rain or not. Um, but you're definitely not needing to put down the volume you would in summer. If you actually keep these plants in wet soil conditions all the time during cold weather events, then it could lead to rot. So definitely a different uh, strategy this time of the year. If you have questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.